Oh yeah, I'm I'm I feel like as though I'm going through some adversities. Um that feeling of inadequacy is is the battle really. It, it's that lack state, I'm not enough, I'm not doing enough, I don't have enough, um, I don't know enough. How how dare I even have the audacity to even sort of make this pivot in my life? One I hear is mindset, refocus your mindset to support whatever it is that you're trying to achieve or trying to accomplish so that you have that built-in resiliency because your mindset supports that. And I think we'll be in a, have save a lot more marriages if more people intended on loving their spouse. Because when you, when you set the intention that I'm going to love my spouse, you're putting your, you're opening up that pathway for the action of loving your spouse. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome back once again to the Ascent Podcast. My name is Brian, and I'll be your guide today as we dive into a very, very important topic, and that is talking about how to transcend above adversity. And that's what we're going to be sharing today is some insight, some of the things we have all done and been through and experienced to fight our way through adversity and keep pushing forward. So uh, let's get into it. The challenge of adversity, getting yourself into the right mindset, the right space to be able to, as we say, pick yourself up and go at it again. Uh, and a, a lot of different things that can be tied to that. A, one can just be your overall mindset, how you approach things in life. Uh, obviously, there are some, some fears that could be associated with that. Sometimes it's just about the learning uh, that, that it takes to be able to reset yourself and then go at something again because it's defeated you or knocked it down or been too challenging. And I know we've all been there. We have experiences and different stories that we can absolutely share that I think will help our audience better guide themselves as they move forward. Chris, I'm gonna to come to you first because just before we started this, you were kind of sharing a little bit about your recent journey and just the, the recent part about uh, having to get the certification out of the way and what that was like mentally and how at one point it really felt like it, the weight of it was like, had you just, I, I can't get, it, get this off my shoulders. But how did you transcend your way through that? I want you to share a little bit about that story. First word of my mouth, plenty of patience. Woosa, <sighs> woosa. Yeah, it's, um, this last few weeks have just been and this is the reason I keep my hair super short because I'm guaranteeing you I would have pulled it out a long time ago, weeks ago. Um, as as most of you know, uh, I've been embarking on this new new journey, new chapter in my life. Um, it and you would think on the surface that I'd be super super excited. The reality is I am super super excited. Unfortunately, with anything new comes the trying to get used to it, trying to digest, in, in my case, content. Um, so for the, for our listeners out there, I'm, simultane I'm simultaneously been doing two things. I got recently, um, I got involved with a uh, local Native Hawaiian organization that's um, starting to cast themselves into the educational space uh, for recently graduated high school students out on the west side. And what we're embarking on right now is um, getting a select group of recently graduated high school students through what they call a, um, uh, it's a CET program or Certified Electrical Technicians program. And the idea here is, is this group of kids who are all very bright, by the way, um, do not want to go to college because they do not want that financial obligation that typically college brings uh, is associated with college. Um, but they all want um, they're all, you know, all these young people are technical, semi-technical minds to begin with because they've got their handheld computers with them all the time. So, and they all have interest in things like, you know, electric, you know, anything that's a do, anything electrical, electrical or technical. So, so, so I got brought in as a, elect, a educational assistant. Well, simultaneously, it makes sense for me to actually even though I'm in the tech field, I've been in the tech field forever. I've never been on this surface level. Uh, I've never had to work in the surface level part of it. So the, the challenge for me was um, to understand technology, uh, technologies and terminologies and just uh, processes um, 
that I've, I've never had in, in the position that I've played in the, in the tech space, I've never had to dance, dance with. So heavy on the math. I mean, we're talking almost trig trigonometry level math. And, and I pride myself on being a, a good math student. Um, so that's one part of it. And, and it, I mean, it's, I, I, I've been so aptly reminded that it, it, it's such a small percentage of folks that are doing or are doing what we're trying to do or can do what we're trying to do. And I am trying to enter that to vortex of, of sorts. And like I said, it's, it's challenging me from every, every direction. Uh, like I said, that fear of failure, that fear of success, uh, probably the bigger thing is the fear of failure on this particular avenue, because the idea that I'm a tech professional, um, that I should be able to do this fairly easy. Well, the, the person to kind of give you a little more context on this, the person that's actually facilitating this is a certified engineer. So you can imagine what level he's operating on. Um, and it's just, you're in the room with, you know, it's, we talk about being in the room with smart people, right? I'm in the room with a uber smart person. And sometimes it just makes it, unfortunately, you feel inadequate sometimes. And so I've been fighting these feelings of inadequacy for probably the last, honestly, if I'm being honest with myself, the last two months. Um, but I've just kept treading water, you know, just kept trying. Cause I think that's part of the, the half the battle with anything, any adversity you come upon or any situation you come upon is just staying the course and, you know, doing what you have to do to try to, come out on the other side, so to speak. Um, I had to set the bar medium. Uh, I usually am a guy that sets the bar high, but I, I had to reevaluate through the process and set the, you know, constantly bring the bar down as I really started to understand what it is I was involved in and really give myself um, some grace, you know, give myself some, cause I'm super, you know, if you've heard, if you've listened to me talk, or you, you, you know, Brian, you know me as a friend of me, um, you know that I'm very hard on myself and I had to really reverse course for my survival um, and succession and get, start giving myself some grace and real, I mean, really practicing. I really had to practice giving myself grace uh, almost on a day in and day out basis um, and just say, you will get there. You know, um, my, my cousin, Tom, who's been on with us before, He's technically a teacher, he's a lawyer and a slash teacher and an educator. He said, when did you ever get involved in something new and two months into it, you were an expert? I said, never. He said, there's your answer. There's your answer. He says, you're, you know, you're a bright person. He says, you definitely don't quit. But the reality is it's going to take you some time to even become close to even mastering it, you know, and in my case, uh, I'm, I'm settling for, let's get to the, let's get to a state of understanding and then we can build upon that. So you've got, so I guess, I guess the, the message here and in, in through all this is, um, what I'm trying to say is you've got to, in certain situations, reassess what, you know, obviously I have a goal. There's a goal on the other end of this, but I'm having to reassess how we're going to achieve and attain that goal and really adjust the plan to give yourself a chance to literally succeed, to have the successes that you deep down in my soul desire that I, more importantly, that I need. So um, it's been a really, uh, it's really taken me to re-examine myself again uh, which I seem to be doing, you know, almost yearly, you're reassessing yourself. But um, just understanding that I believe that I've got some greater purpose. You know, that what is that, the why? We talk about the why. Why, yeah. I have some greater purpose that I am literally starting to, I'm in discovery stage with. I'm hearing two things that uh, I really want to touch on while we're, while we're there with what you're saying. One I hear is mindset um, of, of really trying to adjust, or readjust, refocus your mindset to support 
whatever it is that you're trying to achieve or trying to accomplish so that you have that I'll use the term built in resiliency because your mindset supports that. Um, the other thing you kind of mentioned was, you know, that, that constant reevaluation. And that piece of it to me is, I think, important because that's where you have to uh, be honest with yourself uh, and, and say, you know, maybe I am trying to bite off too much at one time or I need to break this down in, into smaller pieces. And then, Jerry, I saw you nodding your head there a little bit when I was talking about the reevaluation and, and, and taking off too much. Share a little bit about your perspective on that. Yeah. Um, as I'm hearing Chris share, share what's going on with him and, and his um, examinations and all the, these things, I'm like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm, I feel like as though I'm going through some adversities um, and myself, even just currently. And that feeling of inadequacy is is the battle really um it, because it, it's that lack state i'm not enough i'm not doing enough i don't have enough um i don't know enough and um you know how how dare i even have the audacity to even step foot then take this leap of, of cha um, chance or make this pivot in my life yeah, that's every, every that's all everything that came up because I'm like that's that's exactly it. And so, you know, in my in my story on the different levels of adversity that I've had, looking back, I'm like, oh, I, I mean, I wouldn't have had it come you know come out any other way, right? Um, that said, even here and now, I have to remind myself that Jerry, you've been through this before maybe in a different capacity, but you have been through this before. And the difference is now that you are aware that you've been through this before, you should be able to recognize what you should do while going through adversity, quote unquote adversity. And like you guys said, you know, the, or you guys, Chris said, uh, reevaluate um, uh, and, and, recognize that you've been here before but one thing that came up for me was get back into flow like to to literally just say okay hold on all i need to do is a little bit more today towards whatever it is that i'm doing i don't need to eat this whole thing today you know i don't i, I it's i know i'm in the met in the in the middle of a process wait a minute what is it that i even want here Oh, and then I go and I go to that end, right? And experience that I'm already that person and um, and be okay with whatever seems to be happening right now. Because whatever seems to be happening right now, when I've achieved this goal, I'm probably not even going to remember this, this particular moment, right? So whatever I'm experiencing as adversity right now is actually just something that's going on in my head. I can actually sit down, relax. And when you sit down, you relax. In Chris's case, you retain information a lot easier, you know, because you're not so much worried about if you're going to pass or not, or, or if the people are, that you're about to teach are going to understand or not. But if you can just be like, no, it's all actually where I am right now is where I am right now. And I'm just, I just need to take care of whatever is right in front of me, as opposed to thinking about this made up future that may or may not even happen. Right. Um, so, you know, for me, uh, and I, I'm not saying I remember this all the time. It's just as somebody who's been going through this for the last like two weeks of just complete self doubt, like, what am I even doing here? Should I throw in the towel? Um, you know, what's the point of do doing this? And then, and then, you know, people show up to confirm the complete opposite of what I was saying. I was like, why was I even, why was I even thinking that, you know? Um, and then, you know, it, what was it on Thursday of this week? I, I, I mean, I absolutely found myself in isolation mode. I didn't want to talk to anybody. I didn't want to do anything. I, I sat here wanting to do stuff and it just wasn't happening. Nothing like, it, it, and I was like, all right, fine. And so I just, I just went and sat on the couch and just was fine with being by myself. 
as opposed to what I would have done in the past, which is woe is me. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a loser. I, I, you know, screw all this stuff. And it would just spiral as opposed to just allowing, just truly just allowing myself to feel my feelings and being okay with it as opposed to banging a battle with it. Um, and then that got me back into the flow, like without a doubt, like I was like, oh, okay, cool. Like I can make this move. I can make that move. And I feel a lot better than I did on Thursday. I can tell you that. Um, so, and I, mean, I, I don't feel as though I'm completely out of that, the mire and, and the muck or whatever, but I, I can definitely feel the flow is moving a, a lot better through me. I know that didn't necessarily answer your question directly, Brian, because you were asking me about like my past story, but wasn't no. I just sharing my past story? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but no, but you know, and that, that's true, but it still shows that no matter, I think, I think one of the things we need to show about resiliency in, in the word itself is it's not a done process. You know, you don't become resilient once and then now you're, you're good because as you flow through life, you're going to have new challenges, new obstacles, and they're going to hit you in different ways, depending on the stage in life, the responsibility you have in life. I mean, when you're 20 yeah. something and, you know, no, don't have a family and whatever else, what may knock you flat is going to be different than what it may oh, not yeah. be flat when you're 40, when you do have kids and a mortgage and whatever else. So it, yeah. you do have to understand how your mindset shifts and moves with that. So what you shared is very relevant for what we're talking about. Two things I took out of it, and I want to make sure that oh, I, I kind of reinforce those things. When you talk about pace or pacing yourself, and that's, I think that's a key component that we lose sight of uh, for whatever reasons we want, for lack of a better way to say it, you know, instant gratification. You know, we want it. We want it now. We want it to happen right now. I want a resolution for this right now. And that's not always possible. So learning to pace yourself and have some patience, as Chris also mentioned. And then the, I think the most important one, especially as men, and this is a very important one, you mentioned about feel your feelings. It, actually open yourself up and be okay with feeling your feelings, how you feel about something, why you're in that space, what's really going on with you internally, and accept and be okay with that. And men, sometimes we feel like we should be impervious to that, but we're not. And that's where we create so much internal stress and so much internal friction for ourselves because we want to take it, throw it in the closet and close the door and pretend like it's not there, right? Uh, yeah. And so I think that's a key piece that we, want to, that we want to make sure that we are open to and we work our way through those feelings and how we feel. And, and all. I think that's a, a, a key, key component to striding to be a, be, a better self, but also having yourself in a place of what, I, what we're going to call for today's purposes, transcendence or transcending beyond what the challenges might be. Sean, how about you show a little bit about that? Because you know, we've definitely talked and we've had a lot of recent challenges, uh, family, other things that have just been a real challenge lately. So give us a little bit about where your mind space is with that right now. Excellent. Now, I, I felt some kind of way that you went into the feelings talk when it came to my turn. You know, because I have on the pink and the, and the floral colors that, you know, I feel a little bit uh, put on stage a bit. But, you know, for context, I'm in Alabama right now to celebrate our cousin Timothy Bell's um, baby shower. He's having a little girl on the way. So I'm in my pinks, you know, for that. But I, I do I do tend to be the more pragmatic and, um, you know, optimistic person in, in the family and more exuberant than most. So also I'll, I'll take the feelings. Um, I love the points that, you know, Jerry and Chris were making around pace um, and also how pace, you know, um, is tied to mindset. And what, what to me, when they're talking, what came out was, you know, when we're moving back and forth, you know, in the, in the throes of life, all we're doing, I have to remember that what we were doing is we're, remembering what our mindset is so you know you know our life is always going forward you know and we start going too fast for you know the situation where we are and we get you know a little bit uh, ahead of ourselves and that's where we find ourselves you know kind of burning out and hitting the wall sometimes a bit prematurely because you know we, we we've got our mindset we're going to focus on a b c and d it's clear 
Um, I have a clear goal, clear vision, and boom, we're out of the gate. And before we know it, we start hitting those walls of adversity. And sometimes those are because we got ahead of ourselves, maybe too, you know, a bit more than we can chew. Or, you know, we all have these grand goals of, I'm going to be a millionaire. Well, you know, millionaires aren't built overnight. So when we hit that wall of, oh man, I'm at the end of the month and I don't have any money in the bank account, where's my check? I don't really feel like a millionaire. And we start feeling those throes of adversity because the bills are coming due. I'm a parent with mortgages and all of that stuff. And when the money gets funny, you know, we start feeling those tensions. But I always have to remember, Sean, your mindset, what was your mindset? I have a mindset of abundance. I have a mindset of wealth. I have a mindset of prosperity. So it doesn't matter what's happening right now in the physical form, as long as I can get back to my mindset of prosperity and abundance, I'm going to be okay. You know, being in the military, you know, there's a thing called bracketing for all our, you know, field artillery folks. You shoot, shoot once, you see where it lands. Okay, a little too far, bracket it back in. You know, it's start adjusting fine. We forget that in life, it's not a one shot, one kill. It's a bracket. Okay. We have the mindset. Now we're going to keep firing until we get it right on target. Um, And sometimes when you're able to get there and you get back into flow and all you've done is gotten yourself back to your zero and you have to always remember where your mindset is. We get into trouble if we let that slip and forget the why that Chris was talking about, and also, you know, where our place is, where we are on our continuum towards our goal. I think that's really important. Um, I'm a big, big feelings guy. You know, it's taken a while, you know, to rinse the army out of my system and refine my feelings because those got tossed into a duffel bag, you know, quite, quite a few years ago. And to unpack those again and understand that our feelings are there for a reason. Those emotions, that's energy in motion in the body, okay? It's there telling you warmer, warmer, colder, colder, okay? So we have to be able to, you know, parallel our mindset and our emotions so that those are running parallel because if they're going perpendicular, we're going to be hitting a lot more walls than we really need to. So we have to listen to our emotions. And once we get to a place where we have some static, have a little adversity, we can pause and say, oh, hold on. I'm, I'm feeling something. I'm feeling a little anxiety. I got a little headache, a little heartburn here. What, what's going on? What is causing the, causing the static uh, and the adversity that I'm having? And sometimes it's just something as simple as saying, oh, I've, I've kind of drifted away from from my mindset. Sometimes we get get a head full of steam, chest is out, you know, it you step it stepped off the curve a little, a little higher than you thought. But you have to get up and say, oh, okay. That was that particular situation. The next step is not going to be the exact same, but I need to still walk with that same purpose and let my emotions steer me back to where I'm supposed to be. And that's the for me, that's the best best case uh, scenario and best way that I have found of dealing with adversity. I, I like to use an old um, uh, uh, Louise Hay or Abraham Hicks kind of mantra, you know, you know, you know, all is well, everything is working out for my highest good. This situation, only good will come and I am safe. I had an issue a few weeks ago. It took me, Brian, you know, literally 30 minutes of repeating that, going for a walk, repeating it, to get you know myself back into into center uh, back around my mindset because I had let it drift and my emotions were just nagging saying hey hey we're 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 a bit adrift and as men we can't be afraid of that we need to harness that because that can be you know one of our superpowers if we let it. Agree one hundred percent with that, John. And you know it's interesting you bring that up because one of the things I want to talk about next for all of us across the board, and just to have each one of us kind of share our perspective on it, and that is intention. You know, what is your intention in whatever it is you're trying to do? And I think that's an important piece of it because we set a goal, right? I want to achieve this, or I want to achieve that, uh, and. Oftentimes, not all the time, but oftentimes goals tend to be 
more tangible than intangible type things, right? Uh, whereas when we talk about intention, that's where you can kind of tie it back more to the feeling. So it's kind of like, I want to buy a new house. Great, there's nothing wrong with that. But I, and I want I want in two years, I want to be in a house this big, this local, this area, yeah, fantastic. But what can really help keep you focused and motivated is, great, I support that goal 100%. The intention piece of it would be the feeling side of buying that house. So, all right, so let's think about when you go and the, the guy hands you the keys and you turn around and you go, yes, what's that going to feel like to you, right? And actually start to be able to get in touch with that now versus later. Because when it's hard and when other things come up and what do you mean, oh, it is much taxes that takes me off my journey of how much money I'm going to need for my down payment. You know, these things happen as you go through life. You can still channel yourself back and, and ground yourself in that intention, that feeling of, yeah, but I'm going to get the house because that emotional tie I have to it based on the intention and the feeling that I'm going to have of satisfaction and, and everything else, I think is a critical piece. So. Let's talk a little bit about intention. And Chris, I'll come to you first because you mentioned earlier as you were going through this program um, that, you know, you have really turned a corner in your life. And there's a lot of intention that is putting you in places of discomfort because you're having to learn so much new, uh, being the teacher and other things like that. But there is an object that you see at the end of that rainbow. And that's the intention piece of it. So I'll share a little bit about what your your thought on that is right now. You know, I've I've been in this change mode in my my entire life over the over everything in my life for the last almost two years now. I, to be quite honest with you, I had no clue that I would be moving into the space that I'm moving into. Um, I did. It wasn't. It wasn't in my conscious, to be honest with you, but when it got proposed to me, it really opened me up. The, the thought process opened up when I when it got I mean, basically, it, I, I went out for one thing and came back with another, if, if that makes sense. So I went out looking for one thing and came back with something totally different. And but I I, I like the essence of what it represented and how it fed something inside of me. Um, the idea that I could be a part of something that would have such potentially a great reach and the ability to touch uh, multiple lives in the process. And obviously that number uh, has yet to be defined how many lives I can touch. I mean, at the end of the day, if, if I'm being honest, if I touched one, then I did a, I did a good job. But the reality is I keep looking at this thing. And we talked about this a while on one of the previous podcasts about starting to imagine what this thing could be in three months from now and six months from now and nine months from now and a year from now and so on and so forth. And that's what really started to get me excited about it. And that's what helped to really kind of fuel my intentions, so to speak not where I was today, where I could conceivably go tomorrow and beyond. And I've used that as uh, one of the fuels to um, propel me forward. Um, and what's that what that also has required is that I stretch myself out. I've really kind of leaned into some things that I don't know some things, some, some, some areas that I'm not, unsure, I'm unsure where they're going to lead me. But the, the part that actually gives me some comfort is knowing that wherever it is, I believe in my heart of hearts, it's going to be someplace wonderful. And it's going to be, um, it's going to be helpful across a lot of spectrums. And I think that there is need for what I'm doing and what people like me are trying to do. We need more of. It's a select group of people that are even trying this. I mean, I believe me, I could, I, I said this a couple of weeks ago, I could go get a job. That's not 
that's not an issue. I'm a competent professional with a lot of experience. And to some folks, I'm actually likable. So um, I say that because everybody doesn't like me. Well, I know that, but a lot of people do. But anyway, at the end of the day, um, it's really about, you know, that back to that why. And uh, like I said, I, I believe I'm a good person and I, I know I have a lot of good intent. And now it's, it's not, it's really about being able to move that forward. Uh, and really, like I said, try to affect change. Absolutely. So a couple of things that I want to take out of that. Uh, one thing that I think is critical is you, 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 we've talked about this before and the kind of way we framed it before Chris was talking about, you didn't know what exactly you were looking for in this change in this transitional space in your life at this time, but you knew you wanted it to be greater than, but what that greater than was going to be, you were unsure. And that's, kind of the intention piece because that's where your mindset was you had essentially opened your mind opened and communicated to the universe that i am looking for something greater than uh and it from that the universe said hey look what about this right but again that is the mindset you opened yourself up and you it, you drew that to yourself with with the laws of attraction and some other things so i think that's a critical piece is sometimes you might not know the exact what, right? But you do have a feeling as to what it would look like or what it would feel like. That's what we need to make sure we open ourselves up to when we talk about intention. Can I uh, add one last thing? Absolutely. So with that being said, I still don't know what this thing is going to look like at the end. I have, I still, I mean, I have, I'm having, I'm starting to formulate ideas. But I'm still the, the hunger part of what's attached to my to the intention and to the hunger to and the drive to actually get this done, per se, is that I just I just see it. I just I'm, I'm, I'm so curious. I'm, I'm, I'm just so I, I hunger for it to find out what how it's going to you know, how it's going to literally morph out. And when I'm down, because I get, you know, it's a, I'm a tourist, so I'm up, I'm down, I'm up, I'm down. When I'm down, I gravitate back to that. Don't worry about the difficulties you have. Don't worry about the adversity you have. That, that's just part of your, that's part of life. You know what I mean? We, I've got a, I got a truckload of experiences behind me that I carry um, that says, my history says, adversity challenges come to me on a daily, day in and day out basis. But for whatever reason, I've always been able to, to manage to get through mm -hmm. and find some level of measurable success that keeps me going and keeps me moving in the right direction. Absolutely. Absolutely. The other thing that I wanted to talk about there is if you really listen to yourself, and I don't know if you picked this up or not, but everything that you really have talked about getting into the space and starting to teach and help the kids and blah, blah, blah. Technically, none of it is actually for you. So there is a giving mindset that you've also developed as part of this. And I don't know if you've discovered that or felt that about this whole process. And that's another big piece too, is sometimes we really need to understand that what is the best thing for us is related to not just what we get directly from it, but what we give back in certain ways and what we put out that help, does help the universe and feed others and, and different things like that. So that's another big piece of what I picked up about what you shared. Uh, Jerry, I'll come to you. The, it's funny, I was talking to my mentor about, about this like last week and he was like, intention. It's like, I intend, I intend to love my wife today. <laughs> I'm like, well, no, no, that's not how it works. Right? <laughs> it's not how it works. <laughs> I'm sorry, honey. I intended to, <laughs> to love you, but uh, I just couldn't help myself. Right. Um, and, and so, but that said, sometimes I think when, when we think intention, what we're really saying is who are we being like, um, like I, I and, and that's a now moment thing because that's the only moment we ever have. So 
I, like I, as we were talking, I was I was actually thinking about my wife, and I was like, and I was like, and I noticed how I was choosing to not love her. <laughs> I was like literally choosing in this moment, no no reason. She just popped up in my mind, and I was just like, dude, go give her a hug after this call. There's no intention there. I just want to love her. You know, and so, and, but what, but then I have to ask myself, what's like, why do you want to love her? Oh, because I'm feeling love. I just want to, I just want to give my love. You know, there's no, nothing intended or anything like that. I think what happens is, and this goes in the realm of like motivation for me, where it's like, we can, we, we can get ourselves in this place of like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to pump myself up in order to, you know, I'm going to wind, wind my, my doll up so it can like move that direction. As opposed to if you were that type of person, who would you have to be in order for that doing to be automatic? Um, right. Where it's like, it would be that flow state afterthought of all that. Um, that said, I do find myself was like, okay, I intend to take the trash out today, you know, it's like, and I also understand what that is, but again, I still find myself being like, no, you can stop the whole intention thing and just be the type of person who throws away their trash. Right. Because then I don't have to, I don't have to, I don't have to leave it to some secondary cause that I, that I think that intention is a secondary cause. I have a lot of intentions. (laughs) But I'm not necessarily making movements, uh, you know, in those directions. Or I am, or actually, as I say that, or I am making moves in that direction. And I just find myself cons- consistently finding myself hitting walls. Right? Ooh. And and it's, be- and it's because, though I intend on making these moves, though I make these actions, the results still don't show me what I intend on getting. So, um and of course, if I break it down to the ultimate, like the, the most nugget um, thing, it's my being. I, I can intend all I want, but if, I, if I'm not that person, I'm not going to, I'm going to get who I am. Like, no matter what, I will always get who I am. So, um, and I, and I'm, again, I'm saying this from the experience of my last two weeks from for the last month or two, I've been like, man, you know what? I need to take some time off from the farm. I need to like, you know, just take the time off and opportunity after opportunity would show itself and I never took them. And then I fell 20 feet during the 4th of July, during the 4th of July celebration, like straight down state drop, knock, knock me out. Like I couldn't use the left side of like my body because of injury and all that stuff. And I went back to work on Monday. Like that was a, whatever day was it like Thursday, Friday, I went back to work on, on Monday and, um, and I worked and it was absolutely painful, but I was like, that's good. I can work through this, you know? And then the farm manager was like, Jerry, you, you, no, you can't work here. Not, not until you're healed up. And I was like, oh, no, it's not that big of a deal. You guys, it's like, she was like, no, absolutely not. And I was like, you guys, I mean, it's, I get tired and then I can just like, you know, I, I can take the half the day. No, absolutely not. And I got really upset with her. You know, I was like, I want to, I want to I, I work. I don't, you, you guys are making me not work. What's going on? And it wasn't until a couple of days later when I realized I was like, holy crap, I manifested this. I've been asking for this time off and I would never have taken the time off because of, because even though it's my intention to take the time off, I couldn't do it. Now I'm forced into it. But it's because of who I was being back then when I'm imagining myself to be the type of person who's just taking the time off. Now I'm being forced into it because my logical, rational brain won't let me be like boneheaded enough to just take the time off. Um, right. But it's been great, to be honest, because it's put it's sat me down so I could deal with my own funk and, you know, um, and deal with all that. But my intention like what I intend to happen is insight is, um, you know, better health. Um, 
success in my own business. So I'm not having to work a normal nine to five and all that type of stuff. Right. And dealing with the mindset and the state of being that I've ch chosen and accepted to be true about myself. Right. That, that I suck, that I'm a loser and all that. And actually sit with that, sit with that. Because if I wasn't, if I was working the, the normal job, I would not have gotten into this funk. I would have literally intended on taking this time off. Right. Um, but I never would have taken it. Um, so now I'm here answering the question about intention. I'm like, well, if I do have an intention, my next step shouldn't necessarily be okay. Let me go take action. My next step should be, well, who would I have to be in order to be making those type of moves and allow my, and don't force the answer either, but to allow myself to let that show up within myself. Because once it shows up within myself, I'll feel it in my body, which is that energy, which is that flow, which will then be projected out into the, into the, into the screen of space and will be reflected back to me by other people and other objects and other circumstances and so on and so forth. So um, I don't know if there's contention with the word in, uh, intention, but uh, I'm trying to drop bars there. But uh, it, it's more about it's more about who is it? What is this intention saying about me? Is it saying that I'm in the lack state or is it saying that I'm in the abundant state? I don't know if that makes any sense, but that's where I'm going to drop the mic. Yeah, absolutely. That makes sense. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. You know, it's very true when you look at that, um, the, especially the pieces you were sharing, Jerry, about being that person uh, and, and, and getting in, getting yourself to that place of being that person. Uh, and that's where the challenge can be sometimes because there's obviously a void that's there. And so what do we need to do to fill or bridge that void? And sometimes figuring that out can be, a, can be a challenging space to be in, but it is critical that we do get past that because that's where things truly start to manifest and, and you show up truly as who you are and that gets reflected back to you is what you talked about sean how about you share a little bit about that talking about intention and 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 how powerful it can be uh to guide and drive you oh yes <laughs> I, I love this topic you know jerry i was with you for for a while there but you know since only half of your shirt looks like my shirt i'm only with you halfway because i was <laughs> you know i am with you because i think that intention is exactly what you did there you know i love brian's talking about you know the, the feeling of the end you know that's one of those neville goddard uh, concepts living in the in the end feeling feeling that feeling that feeling and getting there um and i think we'll be in a have save a lot more marriages if more people intended on loving their spouse because when you when you set the intention that I'm going to love my spouse, you're putting your you're opening up that pathway for the action of loving your spouse to happen. And if more people have that intention versus I'm going to love my wife, a lot of people say that I'm going to. We all know what going means. You never get there. So that that intention, I think, I think is is the key. Um, as you can tell by the, the jacket, I'm a bit of a peacock by nature. You know, you know, I'm contemplating moving down to Charleston, South Carolina. And if you've never been to Charleston, South Carolina, they have a unique culture, a culture of dress, a culture of food, a culture of music. Uh, it's a whole different vibe. And so, you know, as I as I you know think about that um, and I picture how that would feel, what Sean would look like in his Charleston's best. So what do I do? You know, I go get to a Charleston tailor, find me a Charleston outfit. And I, I get all that into my mind because my intention, I need to know how it feels to live in Charleston. I need to know how it feels because if I can feel it, then I can be it. So I set my intention beforehand because that's what I'm going to be coming back to because that's what's driving and opening up that channel. And one thing that as Neville calls the bridge of intention, those acts that actually get you from you know, the feeling to, to the deed, you know, manifesting, right? So we have to make sure we do that. You know, I use military again, you know, you know, for the enlisted side of the house, they get orders. You're going to do A, B, C, and D. 
on the officer side of the house, you get the commander's intention. I intend to engage with the enemy um, and win decisively, right? With, with these pieces that I have on the board. It's up to me as the officer in charge to make that happen. So he gives me his intention. We're going to win using these pieces. I come up with the, the plan to make that happen. So that's what we have to do in, in our own lives by knowing where we wanna be, where we wanna do and what that end state is, then we can just step into the stream and flow down to that end state versus you know getting contentious and fighting against it saying no in my mind in order for me to move to charleston i need to find a house i need to find a job i need to find the right neighborhood all these things which would be fine and dandy but all they're doing is throwing roadblocks in the way when all you need to do i.e chris you just put it out there and then you jump in the stream and float down to it versus getting in the way and putting up more uh, mountains and molehills in the way because the good thing about our minds is that we can imagine greatly, but we cannot imagine miracles. And our lives are miracles every day because every day we wake up, we see something different that we did not expect. And if we open our eyes, we would really see that. So if we want to open ourselves up to those big grand things, we can't put all the do in the way. We need to put the intention, set it, and then get in the flow and allow it to come to us because we find ourselves just putting ourselves in the way where we can live such a grand, uh, grand life. And that's, uh, for me, that's the, the, what I have found to be the best way to do that. I, I'll tell you, I've had, um, a lot of issues, you know, relationally, you know, um, with things being contentious. Oh, she don't do this. She don't do that. Woo, wah, woo. Okay. We all have been there. But when I simply said, you know what? All of that is old baggage. It's old news. Cause if it didn't happen today, it didn't, ma it didn't happen. You know, we have to get that black and white with ourselves. Keep it real. If it did not happen today, if it happened yesterday or any time before that, you might as well just blank it out. It, it never happened because we live in t the, the now moment, right? So I just I simply said, hey, you know, I'm only going to look at the good things of this situation, right? And I intend to love first because I was finding those same places where I was choosing not to love. I know she wants me to go do this, but I'm not about to do that. I'm not about to give her blah, blah, blah. She's not done this to me, right? I was choosing so many opportunities throughout the day to not be loving. When everybody who knows me knows I'm a very loving, very giving person, but there was some static there that in my mind, I was making a point that I could wash the dishes right now, but I'm choosing not to, you know? So I started setting that intention. I am, going, I am going to have peace in my house. I intend for that. So what does that look like? I'm gonna take those opportunities to be of service to myself and my household every time I can. And now, static free, 90%. And when they come, I say, oh, oh no, <laughs> I, don't, I didn't intend to have static here. I intended for peace. So this, whatever we're going through right now, I can, I can let that go because that I didn't intend for that. That can move on. And I let those clouds of disagreement and clouds of negative just float on by. If it's not following my intention, I know that that's, you know, that's something going upstream. And when you tie it into your feelings, you, you can tie into that upstream feeling. Because if you've been on a river, you've been in the ocean, all my folks out here in Hawaii, you can be in the middle of the ocean going one way, a current will go just the other way really quick right on top of you. And you can either float with that. If you're a surfer, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You're coming off the board. If you drive into it and stay with the line that you've picked when you came off that wave, you're just fine. So we, we use it, intention can also tie into our emotion and keep us, you know, going downstream 
at the same time, as well as guide us into those loving states, if love is what you choose. Now, some of us choose to be ornery, because I was that guy, you know, I'm going to stick to the principle. It's not about how she said it. It's what she said and how she said it, you know. And I can choose to be that person or I can choose to follow my intention of love. And that's the, the best way, you know, for that to happen. 100%. I have to so agree with you about choosing the intention of peace, right? Because that moves it from the actions. Because the actions actually are no longer relevant. Right. But we focus so much on the action and the activity, but it, because that's where our mindsets are, are, are driven and built. We've kind of built those castles around those different pieces. But once you move it to something like peace, then the every moment, this every day that the Jerry said, take out the trash. It, it, it doesn't matter anymore because you will go, oh, I'm just going to do that because that feeds my peace. Right. And so because that's your intention. So that's a huge part of it. And that's why I really want to bring a, a intention to the table, because it does take, as as Sean kind of mentioned, you have to step back sometimes, truly evaluate and then boil it back down to what is it that I want out of this from an intentionality standpoint? And then in your instance, a simple word, I want peace. I want peace in my home. I want peace in my relationship, man. That's a simple statement, but it covers a thousand different things, right? But if mm -hmm. that's where you come from in your choice, because that's the last thing I want to bring to the table is choice. We have the ability to choose. That is the holy grail of us being humans and our mm -hmm. thought process. We yes. know we can choose A or we can choose B. Where we get stuck is we want to try to evaluate and figure out, well, if I do A, it's going to be this. If I do B, it's going to be that, blah, blah, blah. But what we, we don't know, we don't know. We don't actually control the outcome of the choice. The only thing we can control is the choice, right? So make the choice, take the journey. If you need to reevaluate, readjust, do so when that's necessary. The other thing we try to do is we want to go back in time. I need a time machine because I chose to do A. And A got me here. I want to be able to rewind, choose B, and see where that took me, right? And we get in that mind trap as well. And again, not a possibility, not in life. And, and Sean, I think you said it, what we have is now. We have to live in, you, you live in now. The past is gone. The future will come, but we don't know or control what that future is going to look like. An hour from now, I know what I, where I want to be, what my plan is, but who knows? Jerry didn't right. attempt to take a fall last week, you know, but that happened and it changed whatever his intention was and whatever it was he wanted to do it with his life. Go ahead, Sean. Right. So, some, someone put it to me like this, that there are no B choices. There are only A's. A choice, yeah. there's, there's, there's only A choices because you can't go back and take option B. You take option A. You take it. It doesn't work out. It still becomes option A it's again. It, there, right. There's no such thing as B. It's just a, that's a figment of our imagination. Yep. There's only there's only first steps, only only option A, and we have to choose option A. But the beauty is that we can choose option A again and again. If I didn't choose to love today, I can choose to love this afternoon. If I don't choose to love this afternoon, I can choose to love in the morning, right? So it's always option A. There's never any Bs, and we need to see it that way first things first and follow your follow your intention you said it you stick to it because you know i'm like jerry I'm, I'm love i'm i'm full of love it's my it's my peace state so why would i be choosing not to love you know because i've chosen to be hostile and and you know put an old pattern of thinking because that's what it was an old pattern of thinking i got used to you know us not talking for hours on a saturday afternoon right she goes her way that way. We just got into that rut. Couples do that, right? But if I remember that love is inside me and all I want to do is give love, I can say, oh, you know, because I found myself holding on to grudges, Brian, for years. And I'm like, I don't even do that. But in my relationship, I did. You know, I wouldn't, I would never do that at work. I would never do it with my siblings. But in my relationship, I did. 
so I had to be true to myself. I can forgive as well. I don't have to hold on to what you said to me in the car the whole ride home. I can let it go just as much as you can because I'm waiting for you to let it go, but I haven't let it go myself. Okay? I can't expect my spouse to love me if I'm the one choosing not to love as well because she can't reciprocate what I'm not giving. You are a mirror, right? At the end of the day, that's one way you have to look at it is you are a mirror. And the other thing is that I want to talk about, we talked about the choose piece, right? Making the choice. The other thing is how we react. And that's what you were just talking about. I, you choose to let that stick with you and to impact you and to affect you. That again is another choice, but that is the reaction piece, which we also control, right? It's really the the things, the two things in life that we have control over. A, as you said, the A choice, choosing to choose to choose and as you move forward. And then when those things do come, those darts hit us, how do we react back to those things? Is it a matter of, oh, you, oh, put that one down, right? Go ahead. You know, um, it, it, uh, Sean brought up Neville Goddard. He said that um, you can know your state of consciousness based on your reactions to life. And, um, and it's, it, it, it rings so true because like I said, it's like, for whatever reason, the thought of my wife came up and how, like, I like how folded my arms are right now with her. And I was mm -hmm. just like, why, why, why? <laughs> it's like, who, who are you hurting? I'm like, she's not even in the room. Who are you, who, who, who are you affecting? If not you, who's feeling that who's experiencing that? And, and so like, for me, it's not, it, like, this is why, again, wh why the whole intention thing is, it's like, because it's like, at the end of the day, it just boils down to choice. It's not even necessarily intention. It's like, I'm right now choosing to have my arms folded. It's not that I have an intention to unfold my arms. No, I'm choosing to be loving. All of a sudden, guess what? My arms unfold. Why? Because I'm like, I, I feel peace. Right. So like, I don't set the intention to be at peace. I just choose peace. I just choose it. And because I've chosen it, everything that comes with it, including intention are automatic. Like I have no choice, but to make those moves now to keep going with that. I can see how important intention is as I look, even look up the, it, the definition of it, where it's like, okay, I do have an intention of having a clean home, right? I actually do have that intention. You call it whatever you want it, right? But in, I know just is that it's who I am being that would even get me anywhere close to moving as that type of person. Intention or not, I can have that intention and still not achieve it because I haven't changed who I choose to be, who I choose to be, because, and, and this is what my, 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 my mentor was trying to point out to me, I, you can intend all you want to love somebody, but unless you actually love yourself and them, your intentions will still result in you not achieving that. It, like it, it, the intention is just, all an intention is, is a plan. Like you can, I can write a plan up right now and put it on my wall. It doesn't mean it's going to be achieved, right? So it will be achieved if I was being that person. Um, so anyway, back to choice though. Choice without a doubt is our given, is our God-given uh, ability because we can run into it, it, we're constantly choosing a predetermined end. We're constantly choosing a predetermined end. And every time we choose, whether we un know it or not, we're, con we're, we're moving the end. We're moving where the end is. And so if you can learn to, at any given moment, be like, wait a minute, what is it that I want here? Peace. Great. Okay. I'm going to give myself peace. There's nothing out there to give me peace. Okay. I want understanding. Great. Understand then that you are one with God. These little small little things that we can actually choose <laughs> at any given moment, any given moment. 
I, I discovered this about a month ago. I think I shared it on this podcast where I was like, wait a minute. I want to feel good, not for any reason, not for any, for, for no reason whatsoever. I can just choose to feel good. And I can choose to feel good again. And I can choose to feel good again. And like Neville said, um, an assumption, though false, if persisted in, hardens into fact. And so at the end of the day, it's what what choices am I making at any given moment, at, at any given moment for a prolonged frequency or given moment of time. Um, so like I can set times in my day that I'm going to be like, I'm just going to be at peace. I'm just going to sit in peace for 30 minutes and persist in that feeling and then go about my day and let whatever comes to me, come to me. And if I, if I react negatively or react positively, whatever, but I know that I'm often going back to that, that choice of being that person. I'm often going back there, often going back there. Eventually it becomes, um, automatic that I am, I just operate that way because that, that's what I set within myself, which I, which I, again, is intention. I do understand that. Uh, but I, I think that the horse or what is it, the cart before the horse, the horse is who are you being? I think me and Sean are speaking the same language. I think I just had a poor definition of intention. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, I, as, I, as you as you as you as you break it down, I'm like, yeah, we're 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 definitely speaking the same language, you know, yeah. Jerry. We're we're, mm -hmm. we're on it, you know, because for me, you know, intent is, um, it's the internal framework that, you know, that underpins our actions, you know. And this, you know, at a cellular level is how you inform your sales on what you're going to do just today. It's going to be a good day. Me and my son wake up and say to each yeah. other every morning, it's going to be a great day. He wakes up bright eyed and bushy tailed. It's going to be a great day that we've set the intention for the day that it's going to be a great day. So every that. cell in my body knows that it's going to be a great day because this is what our intention is and what we set our mind to. And mm -hmm. You know, it's so easy That's to fall into the are. grogginess. Let me get my coffee and just, you know, you know, drudge through the day. Well, the day is going to be a drudge. I'm sorry to tell you. Yeah, correct, correct, correct. <laughs> but to your point, at 10 o'clock, if you're still drudging and your coffee hasn't kicked in, you are empowered to simply say, huh, well, that coffee didn't work. Let's <laughs> go and have a good day anyway. And spark yourself up and, and go because you can always have that choice to set that. So I, I'm with you. We're speaking the same page. That's why we look like, you know, brothers from another mother over here with the drip. Also, we're the only ones, we're only ones with headphones. Head, yeah, right, 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 right. Okay. <laughs> Chris, what do you want to share? Anything, any other additional pieces you want to chime in on that? <clears throat> well, it's funny. I was sitting here thinking about this and you guys have a, a, a lot of great things to say. And uh, you really, and from, from my perspective, you in, you evoke a lot of thought, uh, mm -hmm. and it's a lot of positive thought. Uh, now, yeah, most of you guys know me. Brian knows me the best out of everybody. Uh, my brain is in constant thought. I mean, it's just, mm -hmm. and it's a tug of war sometimes between the good thoughts and the bad thoughts, the successes versus the failures. Um, but everything, because like I said, I've, I've been trying to stay fixated on the idea, you know, one of the, the what we're the main thing we've been talking about today is adversity and you know how to you know because it comes to you in my estimation it comes every day there's some there's some form of adversity that's going to find you every day whether it's bad traffic um elevator doesn't work um somebody's sick um family situation any number of things um and at the end of the day, for me, when I encounter anything adverse, I try to lean into um, my my growth mindset, which is this is all temporary, and I need to keep keep I keep I need to stay in touch with my intended goals, my intended desires, my to a certain extent my dreams, and I what I want to do is typically on a day-to-day -day basis, I want to find one thing to 
attach myself to this positive that gets me to the next phase or the next step or the next stop on the bus, so to speak. So I use a lot of, and I think we all do, and I think most people do, we use a lot of our past experiences. Now you can lose your past experience, negative past experiences, or you can use your positive past experiences, or you can use a combination thereof. And whatever formula or percentages you need to use to get you to keep it, keep the bus moving in the right direction is what you have to do. And uh, I, I think the term is mental gymnastics sometimes uh, that we have to use. But whenever, and like I said, you, you, you heard in the beginning, I've just been in this state of just anxiety and, 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 and confusion, and fear for the last three weeks or a month. Well, and I didn't toss in one other thing. I've been having car troubles for the last month. You know, it's just been absolutely making me want to pull my freaking hair out, not to mention the expense of it all. So I've had all these different things playing against me. And sometimes what that requires is, is to just pull back. You know, somebody mentioned that earlier. I don't know who was talking about that before, about uh, it might have been you, Jerry. Oh, the, with you falling and being forced to take some time out. Uh, I'm actually cultivating um, an action in me that when it, when it just gets a little bit too much to handle, and that, and that varies from day to day. Let's be clear on that. Um, your capacity will change from day to day. What I'm learning how to do is to pull myself out of it. Mm -hmm. And that's tough. Mm -hmm. We'll be honest with you because the initial part of me says I'm quitting. The newer version of me, the more improved version of me says, no, you're not quitting. You're just pulling back and catching a breath, getting a little rest, figuring it out. Recalibrating. And and recalibrating and reassessing and all that other stuff that we, you know, I talked about earlier and with the intention of something good coming out of it. I think these are, these are actions that I'm practicing right now. I'm practicing all this. I'm practicing this and I'm going to keep practicing it. I saw something the other day and I'll make this brief. Uh, I was watching a video of uh, one of my favorite players is Steph Curry. And, you know, he's arguably one of the greatest shooters on the planet, as they like to say sometimes. And one of the things he was talking about was falling in love or, or more importantly, not falling out of love with the shooting process. He says, you think I make these threes because that's all I do is stand out there and shoot threes all day. He says, I, he, I watched a video where he was started out shooting basically two footers to four footers to six footers to 12 footers. And he said, it's really the mechanics Mm -hmm. So I guess what I'm trying to get to here is it's the mental mechanics mm -hmm. of your life that will offer you a chance at success. 100%. Chris, thanks for teeing this up because this brings me to the exact place I want it to be from a wrapping this up final thought standpoint. There's two things I want to put on the table. You know, you were talking about how daily obstacles are going to just throw themselves in your way, the traffic, the this, to that, and everything else. So what I want to talk about with that is um, control. And that's where I think we struggle too as individuals is we feel as though when things are happen that are beyond our control, that that's going against us in some way. We're taking it personally in some way. You don't control the traffic. You, you, you don't control when the elevator breaks, et cetera, et cetera. Is it an inconvenience? Yes. Does it impact your life? Yes. But, and then, so let, follow this parallel for me. What I want to equate that control or that need for control and how it can impact you in a negative way is, in my mind, a lot of the times control equals energy. So if you get spun out of control because things are happening that are beyond your control, and now that's consuming your energy, that's consuming your focus. Now you're down a road that's really hard to recover from. So that's just a thought and a perspective that I try to do set. So I don't control that. So let's not, let me not give that energy and let me try to keep the energy that I do have and place it on something else that I do have more control over, more power, more influence, whatever it might be. So that's one of the philosophies that I use uh, in, in my 
day-to-day challenge because again as it is it is resiliency it's challenge it's getting over those different things so that's one of the techniques that i use the last question i have for the both of you is this to wrap this up and the question is in what do you feel is the most important relationship that you have in life i would say it's it's my relationship with god um and my relationship with myself uh but which is my relationship with god (laughs) (laughs) no absolutely chris what what are your thoughts what's your what what do you think i immediately thought it's i'm I'm pretty much the same as jerry said um my i've been working on a relationship with myself for years probably decades now but i didn't know it i am very present to that today Mm -hmm that I have a relationship with myself and I owe whatever I'm trying to do with my life. I owe it to myself to be the best version of that and and to do the best I can and, and to never quit on myself, even in the most, you know, even, even when I thought I was down and out and I just wasn't going to be able to go any further to keep reminding myself that I have a purpose for being on this planet. Um, It is yet to be, 100% 100% fulfilled and that's sh- and that drives me uh, and then beyond that it's really about faith you know what I mean I, I I had this conversation yesterday I'm not a religious guy per se I mean I do go to church from time to time uh, I grew up in and around those churches and stuff like that but I really faith has guided me through a lot of uncertainty and a lot of uh, the challenges that we face on a day-to-day basis uh, I know we're in one of the best countries in the world, but this ain't easy all the time. Right. Um, it, it is not, and it's not for the faint at heart. I'm yep. telling you. Yep. So your answers were both right on from what I wanted to bring to the table and talking about this. Obviously, when you have faith, you have religion, you believe in God, uh, Buddha, and, and many other things. There's there's multiple things. Some people are spiritual, the universe, etc. That is your choice for your individual, how you were raised and what, whatever your background is. So that is important. And that is a re- an important relationship to have and to nurture. And that's gonna be unique for each individual. But the secondary relationship that, and exactly what Jerry and you also said, Chris, is relationship with self, right? Because we are a mirror is one term you can use. We draw into life or into our lives what we put out into life too, right? So taking that time, as you said, to be the better, your better self, to put out into the world, the universe, whatever terms you wanna use, the best possible self, being clear about things like we've talked about with intention, what your goals and objectives are, what you feel your purpose is in life. Uh, Chris, you hit earlier talking about a lot of what you're doing now is about giving back and seeing what that looks like and how does that feel and and all of those pieces. So that is the self work that I think is the most critical piece. But a lot of the times what we end up doing and really talking to our listeners out there is we do so much outbound looking at this, that, the other thing and not taking that might not all be self, but how about we at least make it equal while I'm spending just as much time dealing with what's happening outside and of me as, and take the other half of that time and put it to what's happening inside of me. Cause I think that's just a critical, critical piece that gets overlooked or missed. And, and a lot of the times it's that we feel like we do it and then we fall off and then something traumatic happens. And then what do we do? We pick it back up, right? Oh, I picked that back up. And Jerry goes back to what you were saying about your fall. In some ways, you, you it's almost like you manifested that. Oh, I know then, I did. <laughs> yeah, the rest I'm of very the aware. Work. So had yeah. you stayed up and continued to do the work at this level, then that manifestation that when you fell off probably wouldn't have happened, right? No, there's no guarantees to that. There's no but guarantees. You can always say that, yeah. You can always say that, right? But that's just... A mindset that I have been working to develop and to strengthen is to say, you know what, if you're going to do the work, do the work, try to be consistent, try to stay at that certain level within yourself 
to hold yourself to that standard, whatever it whatever it might be for you as an individual. And then every so often, you know, raise that bar a little bit. And yeah. Work your way up to it. And then raise that bar a little bit and work your way up to it. Uh, so that's that's my thought on the, the importance of self relationship and and why yeah. I think that's a area for energy, for focus, for effort, and consistency uh, as being part of that that mission too. The relationship with myself, I mean, at the end of the day, that's who you go to bed with at night, even if there's somebody else laying next to you. And um, I truly do believe that the outside world is reflecting what I'm holding on to in consciousness. So whatever my the inner man is saying, doing, having within myself is actually what's happening. And so it behooves me to have that relationship, to see what, what it is that I'm doing um, in the potter's house, if you will, right? So like, and see, you know, see how he's working at the wheel. And, you know, when, when, I, when I find myself down, like I have been in the last two weeks, I, I, it's not like I necessarily recognize that I was down. It's not until like Thursday that I was like, whoa, where, <laughs> how did I get down here? Um, but, you know, but when I had that realization, I realized it was like, well, you know, you really haven't been treating yourself very well the last, you know, last number of weeks, a couple months or whatever. You say whatever you want. Um, who, who am I going to point my finger at? You know, all, all that stuff came up. And it, at the end of the day, it's just me, myself and I, you know, and um, and it's not to condemn myself. It's not to condemn. It's not to berate and, and make myself wrong. Um, nor is it for me to make myself right. It's for me to enjoy my own company, to truly just enjoy myself and love myself and be at peace with myself and understand myself. Chris, what about you? Any final thoughts before we wrap up for today? Oh, yeah. I actually thought about the final thought last night. <laughs> okay. Or at least I thought what I thought it might. A lot of times I shoot from the hip with the final thought. And I, last, I, I don't know, my week went from out of bounds, out of control to everything's all right, you know? So uh, anyway, my thought, I, I took the time to actually write my final thoughts. I'm just going to go ahead and give it to you, paraphrased how I wrote it. Every challenge is not the beginning of your end. In most cases, it's the beginning of a beginning. Human beings are comprised of various interconnected systems and, and elements that can be broadly categorized as physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual components. One key component that connects them all is your brain. And I consider that a precious muscle that requires continual nourishment and training. The old saying is that life is 75% mental is a common motivational concept that emphasizes the importance of mindset, mental attitude in achieving success and optimizing challenges. The core idea is that the mental resilience, attitude and perspective play a crucial role in navigating life's difficulties and reaching one's goals. The phrase highlights the belief that we, how we think, react, perceive situations significantly impact our ability to handle life's ups and downs. Remember, it's your muscle. Use it wisely. 100%, sir. Thank you for sharing that. And that is spot on. Yeah, spot on. Gentlemen, thank you so much. This was super informative. I think we both uh, shared a lot that our audience can take away. And I think even within our unit here, we, we learned some things and some perspectives and just uh, knowledge to help us each individually on our own individual journeys as we continue to travel and move forward to be the better self that we can possibly be right so stay focused to that so to our audience out there thank you uh, and, and as always say take care and, and take care of each other until next time bye now